This is a discussion of type B evaluation of uncertainty and how you actually use this when you're making a measurement. So remember this one is associated with the measurement of a single value. And that means when you look at what your uncertainty is in that measurement, you look at the measurement tools, the methods, anything that goes into like, you have made a measurement and now you're looking at how sure am I that I actually measured what I set out to measure. So for example, we have a little post-it note here. I've got a ruler. I'm going to measure it in metric units. My smallest increment are meters, or sorry, millimeters right here. So hopefully you can see where that ends up. When I measure this, it looks like it's five centimeters and it's right maybe at that tick mark. So I would say my value here I put the line over because it's the value is 5.1 centimeter. And then for the uncertainty, u of the distance. So I've got the ruler set up to measure to the best of its ability. So I would use the rule that would say it's an analog instrument. It's going to be 0.2 times a, where a here is not acceleration, but rather the smallest unit of measurement. And for this ruler, that's one millimeter. Here, A is one millimeter or 0.1 centimeter, since that's what I made my actual measurement in. And so that means that the uncertainty is 0.2 times A or 0.2 times 0.1 centimeter. Now what I'm doing here is I'm looking to see, is it really on that line? Is it a little bit bigger or smaller? It looks like it's really truly on that line. So that means I'm gonna add in a zero here. I really do think it's 5.1. It got to that first millimeter tick mark and it's exactly on that. It's not a little bit above, it's not a little bit below, but exactly on. And then for the uncertainty, it's 0.2 times 0.1 centimeter. So that's gonna be 0 0.02 centimeters. And then I can write this together as, my guess is it's five, 0 0.10 plus or minus 0 0.02 centimeters. That is my best guess for the value and the uncertainty of the width of this little bunch of post-it notes. Double check I've got the figures right. Remember we get one significant figure in uncertainty except if it itself is a one. So no sig figs up here. Two is our only sig fig. We're good there. And then for the value we need to be the same decimal place as we are for the uncertainty. So we're in the hundredths of centimeters for the uncertainty, and we report it out to the hundredths of centimeters for the value as well. And so that means how to interpret this is I got a zero in uncertainty here, so I'm really certain that's supposed to be a five. I have a zero in the tenths of a centimeter, so I'm really certain that should be a one. But my first bit of uncertainty shows up here in the hundredths of the centimeter. So that's saying, like, I, my best guess is this is a zero, but maybe it's actually a one, or maybe this would actually flip down to be a nine. So I'm less certain about this guy. This is where my first uncertainty shows up. So now we're going to look at a type A uncertainty evaluation, how you would make that. And remember, type A is associated with many different measurements of the same thing. And this is only interesting if those different measurements all give you different results. If you measure the same thing and you get the same result over and over again, you don't really have a big type A uncertainty. So you're gonna to have to go to type B evaluation to figure out, okay, it looks like I measure it and I could do it well enough that I get the same thing over and over again. So I need to look at the precision of how that measurement is being made. 
if you do this, then, you know, I'll take a whole bunch of measurements and I'm going to call them XI. So when I put an I, I'm just saying this stands for the count. It just means I've done a whole bunch and I'll label them out. So say my first one is 5.6, my second one is 7.2, my third one is 6.1, my fourth one is 5.7, and then so forth and so on to different measurements. X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, X6. And so to write them out, I just do I subbing in for one of those subscripts. So how I would actually find the value here is I would take the average. That would be my best guess for what that value actually is, and that's how I remember which one is A and B. A, I take the average to get the value, and to find the uncertainty, I would take the standard deviation, not the normal standard deviation, but the standard deviation of the mean. And that you should not do by hand, you should make the computer do it. So now we're gonna switch over to the computer and see how that works. Now I've got a browser open. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Sheets and we'll want a blank sheet. And I am then going to upload our file that has the numbers in it. And just drag it over and drop it. It'll be uploading. And there we go. So this is our example type A file. We have our trials numbered out one through six, and we have the data from those trials. So we would like to get the value for all these measurements and the uncertainty. So the value, we will do the average. And Google has a wonderful function called average. In fact, it's smart enough to say, I think you probably want the average of these numbers, which we do. We'll press enter. There we go. And I'm just going to label this. We took the average. And then for uncertainty, we need to do the standard deviation of the mean for these same data numbers. But it's a little bit easier if we first take just the regular old standard deviation, which Sheets has a function for. We will collect the data by clicking and dragging all the data we want to include and the parentheses, press enter. And then to get the standard deviation of the mean, we take the standard deviation. So I put in an equal sign because we're gonna do a function. I click on the standard deviation and then we divide it by the square root of the number of trials. So I type a slash to divide and then there is a square root function, SQRT open the parentheses, and we could just type six in because we know there are six trials, but we could also be clever and use the count function. So open parentheses, we're gonna grab all of that data again. It'll count up how many numbers there are, how many trials we've done. So we'll end the parentheses on the count, end the parentheses on the square root, and we can press enter once more. And then we have got our standard deviation of the mean, and then this number here is just the plain old standard deviation. And that was an intermediate step. We don't need it anymore, so I'm gonna strike it out so we don't get confused. So the last thing we need to do is take care of the significant figures. For the uncertainty, we only get one significant figure, so we need to reduce this down. And we can just remove the number of decimal places that show by clicking that button here. So our uncertainty first shows up in the tenths place, and that means we need to reduce the value down so it's just showing the tenths place. So we can do the same thing. There we go. And then for this experiment where we've done six trials, gotten all of these results, the value that we would actually report for our measurements would be 6.2 plus or minus the uncertainty, which is 0.2. And that's how you do a type A uncertainty evaluation.